So Stable Diffusion 3 has now arrived and this time we'll be able to chat with it. So Stability AI have now announced the arrival of Stable Diffusion 3. I've had a chance to play around with it and I'll give you my ideas about how it functions a little bit later. However, let's take a look at the announcement itself. What Stability say is Stable Diffusion 3 and Stable Diffusion 3 Turbo are now available on the Stability AI Developer Platform API. They also say that in keeping with our commitment to open generative AI, we aim to make the model weights available for self-hosting with a Stability AI membership in the near future. And we've got a few examples here where they can show the ability of the models to understand your language and to apply the language appropriately. So here, this one is pretty impressive. There's a chair on top of a roof and the best view in the city is the writing there. The prompt, a red sofa on top of a white building, graffiti with the text, the best view in, in, in the city. It gets the prompts correct quite a lot of the time. It does struggle a little bit, but it is a very good, fairly reliable prompt understander. Now there's quite a lot of information about the API. And one of the things I noticed that was that on this page here, it does document that you can actually create images apparently in different aspect ratios. So we've got one to one, which is the default. And then you've got 16, nine, 21, nine, two, three, three, two, and so on. I was only able to create one, one images. So maybe there's more functionality behind the scenes than we've seen so far. Now the user interface is a fairly bare bones user interface, but as you can see here, I did some tests here and here I asked it to create a beautiful female alien with beautiful eyes and it did that quite well. There was a couple of images that I really liked. This one looks a little bit like a mermaid and I also tried this with Stable Cascade and Stable Cascade just couldn't create an, an alien who looked female and who had beautiful eyes. It always created human looking females with you know, cat ears or something like that. But this one really followed the prompt very well. And also we had to test, of course, the text and the text, it handled the text very well. So Stable Diffusion 3 held up on a sign. And I also asked it to go a little bit further and say, hey, look, can you create the, the text on a sign and then hold the sign up to the, to, to the chin? And it did that one time, two times, the spelling is correct. If there's an error, if there's an error there, that's my error in the spelling. And then Stable Diffusion 3 held up right there to the mouth. Pretty okay. It's also much better than Stable Diffusion SDXL with uh, finger and hand poses. Here the alien is holding up the peace sign. Let's hope the aliens actually do that when they first arrive. Uh, and what we can see here is a good understanding of the prompt. I said hold up the peace sign and it held up the peace sign using the alien's hands. Now, the other thing that it can do is to follow very difficult prompts. And this one, it looks a bit ghastly, but it's basically the invisible man. It <laughs> created the invisible man. A lot of the AIs that I tried this with to create the bandaged man with nothing inside because he's invisible. Most of them struggle. It did struggle a little bit with this one. It created something that looks a little bit like a mummy, but I just wanted nothing but bandages but it, it tried its best and it did a lot better than some of the other AIs that I've tried this with. Some more aliens looking fantastic. And I also asked it to create a Roman Senator. Now you may know Google Gemini really, really struggled with the Roman Senators. It was creating African Roman Senators, which I guess is okay, but it also created Chinese Roman Senators and it created Indian Roman Senators, sometimes no white folk as well, so pretty useless. This one did create, you know, something sensible, but it looks a little bit like a statue. This is a problem as well with Stable Cascade. It creates Romans and Greeks looking like marble statues a little bit. And I asked it, can you create, can you accept negative prompts? And, you know, I said, don't make it look like a statue or a sculpture. So it made it look like a painting, which I guess makes sense. But then I uh, asked it, make it look photorealistic. And, we, and it went back to this sort of not very natural looking, almost like this is paper mache or something like that, like some kind of sculpture. Confucius, for whatever reason, just came out looking fantastic. And these things seem to have problems with, with Romans and Greeks. It's specific to to, to Stable Diffusion. I asked it to draw uh, Mark, not Mark Twain, Oscar Wilde, and it gives Oscar Wilde a mustache. This is a very stylized depiction, 
but I'm pretty sure Oscar Wilde didn't have a mustache. I'm not sure why this does that and also Stable Cascade gives him a mustache as well. A very stylized marble bust of Socrates and then we had Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart looking fantastic here and then we had Isaac Newton it just doesn't look like Isaac Newton. This is supposed to be a stylized portrait of Wolfgang and it looks fantastic. You've got the music just flowing around him. That was the prompt and it managed to follow the prompt, but also the style, the way the music just whirls around. It explodes around the, the, the young man. His hair is wild and it looks period. It looks like whatever period Wolfgang lived in. The violin, violin looks fantastic. This is just like some kind of conductor, just conducting the music. It looks cool and it produced lots and lots of images which all followed the prompt exactly. And most of them look fantastic as well. And of course the text it, it is able to understand 3D text as well. So in many ways about as good as Stable Cascade. Stable Cascade sometimes can produce weird looking images. I didn't have that problem with, with this particular model. There are times when it just fails. Oh, hands, fingers, it can just fail. But it, with Stable Cascade, you kind of have to get used to its idiosyncrasies. There's a lot of moving parts. But with this one, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more stable than Stable Cascade. And it's very, very effective. I really enjoyed working. I really enjoyed working with it. Now, to summarize what it can do, it can understand natural language. I asked it and it gave me this answer. It can provide information, answer factual answers, and it can perform tasks and maintain neutrality, learn and adapt. I did ask it some information, some up-to-date information. I asked it about an article on Bloomberg about Apple's new coming M4 chips. And these M4 chips, they're rumored. There's no, there's no confirmation. So I asked it to read a fairly complex article. It summarized it reasonably well, but it kind of got lost somewhere where it started talking about the M1 chips. And I realized that it's actually limited to 2021. It can go up to 2021 when the M1 chips were around, but it doesn't understand that there's a time period where it doesn't actually have any information. And that was something to be aware of. But otherwise, pretty good experience with this new model and the image, the language, the language model and the, I think the user interface can improve over time.